Society is changing in many ways, all of which have implications uh, for how the pharmaceutical industry is likely to conduct its business in the future to meet the needs of patients and of healthcare systems more widely. So we have aging populations, a growing burden of chronic conditions like cancer and cardiovascular disease, and an increasing number of patients who are living with multiple conditions at the same time. All of this puts pressure on healthcare systems, both in terms of the scale and nature of demand and in terms of healthcare costs. We're also facing challenges associated with new infectious disease threats like COVID-19 or re-emerging infectious diseases, as well as related challenges to do with antimicrobial resistance and with changing public attitudes to vaccination. Patient expectations are also changing. So patients are expecting more personalized approaches to their care. And as individuals, we are also being enabled to engage with our own health in new ways. So for example, through various wearables and apps that can monitor the state of our health, through peer support communities and through telehealth and telemedicine. Now in this landscape, those who pay for new diagnostics, new medicines or new vaccines are increasingly interested in paying for an outcome. So not just the product, not just the pill. We are at the same time seeing advances in science and technology, which are creating new ways for us to improve how we innovate. So we see, for example, developments in artificial intelligence and machine learning, but also in some other areas like stem cell therapy, gene therapy, the microbiome, novel immunotherapies. So that's the landscape that we're living in today. And, and all of this has some rather profound implications for the pharmaceutical industry. So, for example, if we look at the quest for personalized medicine, this means that pharma companies will really need to understand patients better uh, in order to, to better target research and clinical trials. And this means that they'll need access to quite a lot of rather varied data about patients. In terms of the growing payer interest in paying for an outcome and not just the pill, pharmaceutical companies will need to collaborate ever more with others in the healthcare system. So for example, with those who can assist with monitoring patient compliance to treatments, with those who can assist with health education and awareness raising, and with organizations who can assist with collecting and curating patient data because all of these issues really matter for achieving desired outcomes. This focus on wanting to pay for outcomes and wanting to deliver outcomes also means that a society will need to find innovative ways of assessing the value of personalized treatments that come out of pharmaceutical companies. And this means that we will need to find better ways of gathering data about outcomes and impacts and not only outcomes and impacts on patients, but also wider societal and economic impacts. Personalized care also means more segmented markets for pharma companies. So the way that pharma companies are likely to hedge their bets and decide what to invest in, what patient types to focus on, which conditions to focus on, which technologies to invest in in-house and which collaborations to pursue, all of that is likely to evolve and those types of decisions will be reflected in drug pricing and affordability. And I'll flag just one more implication of the changing landscape. In the context of what we're seeing with infectious diseases like COVID-19, and also in the context of antimicrobial R&D and, and vaccine R&D. And this is that we need to find more sustainable and more scalable ways of ensuring industry innovation in these areas. Their involvement is key, both because of the skills and infrastructure they have, but also in line to public expectations and the moral imperative to help save lives.